screen. See what that does. Uh, that was genius. There we go. Okay. <laughs> these are some, these are some, everything works okay now. I don't know how you knew that. That's wonderful. Okay. These are a few of the plants that were really big hits in 2019. And um, I always like to talk about Alstroemeria because I think it's a very underused plant. Um, these are typically annual. However, if you plant them in the ground and they have lots of time to root out, and we have a normal winter, not a really severe winter, these Alstroemeria can overwinter. They're phenomenal um, cut flowers, but the stems are short. Um, unlike the ones that were bred to be used in uh, as cut flowers, which have long stems that are sort of floppy, uh, these are short and they spread from stolons. They bloom all summer long. They come in all different colors. And Mulan is just one new color. Um, we really upped our production on these for 2020. And consequently, this is uh, something that we have, still have a pretty decent supply of. If you haven't grown these before, you'll love them. People sort of fight over them in the spring. Um, what else can I tell you about them? Uh, they're good in pots, but they won't overwinter in a pot. If you, uh, I've got some forms of this that are actually perennial, where they come up, you know, year after year after year. They don't really get too far out of the ground till later on in June, then they're usually blooming by July and they keep going until the fall. So um, check these out if you've never grown them before. I think they're wonderful. There's sort of a close up of a plant with the little label sticking out. That's the new one for 2019. I have one or two, no, uh, three or four new varieties for 2020, <coughs> some of which are still available at the store. So pick a color, come in, check them out. I think they're wonderful. Uh, last year, they started introducing these new Calabracoa that had the, this sort of star-shaped pattern in the petals. This one's called Cabaret Pink Star. Now for 2020, there's quite a few other varieties, but this is a pretty big hit. Proven Winners has a few different ones in the Mini Famous series. There's a few, and this is a new one in the Cabaret series from last year. So these are little petunia relatives, cascading habit, love the sun. All you got to do is feed them. They're self-cleaning. They're great in containers or in the ground, a little bit better in containers. Um, very popular. There's a new series of salvia. You a lot of you are probably familiar with black and blue salvia, where the calyx and the flower are different colors. Here you've got like a rose to pink flower with sort of a mauve calyx. This one's called scar star skyscraper pink. Hummingbirds love this too. The plants are a good two feet tall and they come in pink. They come in orange and they come in um, like a violet color. This is similar in the calyx and the flower are different colors. This is a proven winter plant. I really like the, the size of the flower. I like the color. I like the, the, like the beefiness and the strength of the plant. Um, they look great in the pot. They look great in a bed. Hummingbirds love them. Uh, beautiful plants. You should check them out. Our, our sales of this type of salvia have gone through the roof in the last year or two. Um, it's like we can't grow enough black and blue salvia and, and salvia like this or the skyscraper series. So check these out, whether you're into hummingbirds or not, they're great plants. Um, and then this perennial I liked because a lot of you know what cat mint is. And they're, it's usually like a short muffin with blue flowers for a good chunk of the summer. And then you, uh, you trim them and they rebloom and then you can trim them again later on in the summer and they'll rebloom in the fall. Uh, this is just like that except um, compact upright plants at 10 to 12 inches tall. Um, I think that is inaccurate. I think Neptune is the one that grows up closer to two or three feet tall. So if you like taller Nepeta, like I do, you should try this one. Nepeta Neptune. Oh, and, and then uh, I'll show you a few of the new annuals for 2020. This is a, uh, a new agave. And we have quite a few of these. Some, some look a lot like this, where you have white or gold variegation in the leaf super spiky jagged edges a point on the on the tip to keep um the critters away i guess and with the whole craze for succulents it's kind of nice to have something a little bit different that maybe you can work into the center of a container or in a combination with a bunch of other plants this one's called snaggletooth i think these just came in a little while ago they're like literally two inches across and by maybe summer or late summer they'll be pretty you know like cute enough big enough for people to have an interest in them but agave, succulents, echeveria, awarthia, all these different succulents and their relatives have become very, very popular the last few years.
super easy for people to grow. <clears throat> um, in wax leaf begonias, the last few years they've come out with quite a few new ones like the bigs that grow a good foot and a half or so feet tall, the whoppers that grow a good two feet tall. This is sort of a basketball size plant so it's, uh, I, I guess you could call it a medium sized one with extra large flowers, beautiful foliage. Um, everywhere I've seen this, it's been fantastic. Pretty in the flat, pretty in the garden. Um, you can see it's a 16 to 20 inches tall. Um, this is the largest white flowering wax leaf begonia on the planet right now. For the, so for those of you who, who, uh, who like bigs and like whoppers, but are sort of bummed that we don't have a white one available. These top hats give us the biggest white flowering wax leaf begonia that, that there is. 16 to 20 inches tall, really big flower, beautiful foliage. Um, these, like other wax leaf begonias, I don't know if you've been to the garden center lately, but most garden centers are out of begonias. Landscapers are screaming for whatever they can get their hands on. Um, my next crop of these will be ready in another week or so. Um, and if you can still get some, try them. I, I think they're wonderful. I did have a few samples of these last year. I really like them. Um, and there is a new bicolor um, that you can see maybe a little bit better on the left. That it's not just light pink, but the outer edge is a deeper rose color. And I will tell you that in the sun, that deeper rose color intensifies a lot. Um, it's almost like, it's all, it almost goes to red with a white inside. We, we used to grow the Volumia series. We're not offering that one anymore. We've replaced it with top hats where you can get red, white, pink, and now rose bicolor. Um, this is one of those Boliviensis type begonias. Boliviensis will tell you that it's the type that will thrive in sun or shade. They almost always have a cascading habit. And now we have them with this beautiful chocolate brown leaf uh, this is a really pretty foliage plant in real life, a really pretty flowering plant in real life, grows in sun or shade. We offer it in hanging baskets to look an awful, like, uh, an awful lot like the picture that you see there. And we also offer it in four and a half inch pots. This Bossa Nova series that includes night fever papaya also comes in a whole bunch of other colors, most of which have just green foliage, and they're, but they're wonderful performers. In pots, um, cascading over the edge of a window box or a container or a wall, Great plants. Uh, and here you see some of the other colors that are available in the Bossa Nova series. <clears throat> this is a canary wing begonia. Jackie, you, you remember seeing this at uh, Longwood about the same time I did. It's a, a golden leafed version of our dragon wing begonias. Uh, you've got to see these things in real life. They're, they just glow in the dark. The flower, they, they call it red, but it's really a rosy red. Um, beautiful foliage, beautiful flower, great plant, but Look at the big except at the bottom of the description here. It's just like a dragon wing, except it has to be in shade. This is not a sun plant. Uh, regular dragon wing begonias can grow in sun or shade. They come in pink or red. This only comes in red. It has to be in the shade. We tried, well, I shouldn't say we tried. We accidentally put it in more sun. They didn't like that. Uh, we grow them in, in a shady greenhouse, great in a hanging basket, great in a pot all by itself. I love these little guys. Uh, we even saw these in flats, sort of like a premium uh, jumbo six pack where you would pay $14.99 for six plants. Um, still comes out to a little over $2 per, per plant. You get a, quite a bit of bang for your buck. And this is a picture that uh, I took at Longwood Gardens. Um, Jackie was there, I think a week before I was, uh, looking at the same thing. They had them in the ground. They had them in hanging baskets. They were everywhere and they were spectacular. So that's the... Um, Canary wing begonia. George, I took two hanging baskets from you and I potted them up. I'll send you a picture. They're amazing. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, my hanging baskets are that nice natural fiber, that brown earthy fiber color. And you've got that glowing golden foliage cascading over it. It's, it's pretty spectacular. Okay, these are, um, this is a true tuberous begonia, the kind that develops, you know, a tuber. Like White Flower Farm, Farm used to offer these and they sold you the tuber and you would grow this big plant and had these big, almost softball sized flowers on top in all different colors. The problem with them, I found over the years, it was very frustrating for me and I kept trying and trying and trying to overcome this problem, is that they often had virus. 
So the foliage would emerge from the, from the tuber. Actually, oh, I guess I should turn off my, uh, phone, my phone, huh? The foliage would emerge, emerge from the corm with golden streaks in it. So I knew it had virus. It would still have nice flowers, but the foliage wasn't perfect. Now they're growing these from tissue culture and they look beautiful and clean like what you see here in this picture. They're called Amera hybrids. The flowers are big. Um, these are a few new colors. That's a, that's a peachy pink one. That's an, a salmony one. There's pretty bicolored ones. Um, I think I've got these in like an eight inch or a nine inch pot for right around 11, $12. You could put this in the ground or in a pot all by itself and just drool over the gorgeous flowers that they, cre they create in shade or a partial shade. I even have a few in four and a half inch pots. That's sort of a long story, but some, some of the seedlings came in extra teeny. There's no way I could have finished them in a bigger pot. So I put them in four and a half inch pots. So one of the varieties is available in a little pot at sort of an extra low price compared to the bigger ones. So there's just another variety there called Picketty Lace Red. So a fun, a fun potted plant for shade, enormous flowers. <clears throat> this is another, uh, Begonia boliviensis, like the uh, bossa novas that we talked about a moment ago, but this is um, in the funky series, uh, which has been around for a couple of years, one of which is an, uh, was an All-America Selections winner a couple of years ago. This is just a new color in the scary series called Funky Scarlet. So it's just like bossa nova, a few extra layers of petals in the flower, um, a few less colors are available in this series, but it's vibrant. Love sun, love shade, great in baskets, good in pots, great little plant. Um, and this is another one, uh, funky light pink. And I think with these two, uh, it brings us to a total of three in the funky series. So there's three colors in the funky series and at least seven or eight in the bossa nova series that we discussed previously. There's a close up of the flower for funky light pink. Uh, this is the can uh, caladium called burning heart. You guys are familiar with caladiums and how diverse the foliage can be. It's usually incredibly diverse uh, patterns of reds, pinks, and whites. Well, this one is like a burnt orange with little like light orange speckles through it. I probably had almost as many of these as I, as I had all the other caladiums combined. Hundreds of these and hundreds of the regular ones and I'm literally down to just a handful of these left. Uh, this is a, a, we got a few samples of this in last year. This is a picture of the pot that was sitting on the floor. Um, and I put an extra large price on it so it wouldn't sell, so I could keep showing it to people to sort of generate some interest. Finally, somebody bought it, but I took a picture of it, fortunately, before it sold um, as a reminder to me and so I could show you that this is a really cool caladium. You know, caladiums, as you know, thrive in sun or shade. Uh, for the most part, but some are a little bit more, the strap leaf types will tolerate full sun. The regular ones really prefer to be in shade or partial shade. I think this is one of those shade or partial shade ones. Uh, this is a uh, one of several new Calibrachoa. Rather than having a single flower or a fully double flower, this has like a little double floret in the center of a single flower. And these are called tastics. This is orange tastic. And there's this tastic and that tastic. Um, this one in real life has uh, has uh, sort of drawn quite a bit of interest in both four and a half inch pots and hanging baskets. Some of the other, that's what it looks like in a hanging basket. And you can see uh, off to the right, uh, one of the other ones. This is another one called plum tastic. This one is just okay. Orange tastic, I think, is better. That's plum tastic in a combination with a dark blue one. Um, so anyway, check those out. They're just different compared to the double ones that we already have. This is a new color in the mini famous series called ne Neo Violet Ice. The diversity in the single flowering Calibrachoa, like Super Bells and the many famous series and Million Bells, it's just through the roof what you can get. I mean, you name it, it's there. So the colors, they're easy to grow, they're self-cleaning, they love the sun, they're cascading. Um, they're just getting more and more popular. And now we have a wonderful uh, fertilizer that you can use on these that keeps them happy all season long. It's just called Petunia Feed. Yes, this is a Calibrachoa, but like petunias, it benefits from certain things in its food. So 
get one of these, throw the right fertilizer on it, and they're super, super easy to grow. This is a, uh, a new coleus in the stained glass, in the glasswork series called Stained Glassworks Velvet. Um, about 18 inches tall, really big leaves, a nice little serrated edge, sort of speckled with that maroon color. Kind of fun for a container or even a bed. There's a close-up of the leaf. I'm pretty sure these are sold out. They were, they were pretty cool. Um, I still have some fun coleus left. I mean, there's several thousand of them, but uh, it seems like people are, are gravitating to the brighter colors and I have a lot of darker muted colors left. Uh, this is called Wicked Witch. This one, if I'm not mistaken, is one of those proven winter plants. So this is the kind of plant that you could pick up at other garden centers, not just at Telly's. It's uh, maroon, obviously, with a lime green edge. Heartbreaker, really bright rose center. And rather than being more upright like this one and this one, this is a little bit more of a, a ball shape, like a basketball shape, 12 to 15 inches tall and wide. And then I can't explain this order, although I, I may have tried to fix this in your handout, but not in my presentation. This is a, uh, a caliber co with super vibrant colors and um, just a sort of a unique color combination, these sunset tones or dark oranges to yellows. And this is in the cabaret series. I only, I cherry pick a few colors from the cabaret series and a few other series where there's something really fun, but I grow a lot of the mini famous series and I grow a lot of the, um, the proven winner ones that are unique, not the boring ones, the fun ones. <clears throat> This is uh, one of many, many, many new calicacia and alocasia. These are elephant ear relatives with big, beautiful, bold, brilliant leaves, uh, golds, greens, uh, uh, some have patterns. This one's obviously black. If you leave this in the ground and it's happy uh, through the summer, by late summer, that's how big the leaf can get. It's a very, that's not my kid, by the way. Um, but it, 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 it's obviously a very large leaf very dramatic in a container. Um, and although this is beautiful, and I think you would love to have it in a pot, um, there are many others like this that you should take a look at next time you're at a garden center that has a good supply of these. Uh, they'll grow in sun or shade. The more sun they get, um, the more water they need. And you've got to be careful about how much wind they get because the first few, the leaves that they develop in the greenhouse usually aren't that tough. And so you'll lose them shortly after you plant, but then you wait for the new leaves and they'll be tough enough to get you through the summer and, and into the fall. And you can even bring these in and grow it like a house plant in the winter time. Um, this is a little cosmos that um, I should have removed from this presentation because I never got this seed. But it's the type of, you guys are all familiar with cosmos because you know, your mom and your grandmother had them. Sometimes they grow tall. Uh, sometimes they don't, depending on what variety you select, usually shades of pink, red, and white. But there's these, this other kind of cosmos called sulfurious. They come in shades of uh, like an orangey red, orange, and yellow. Well, this is, an, this is a new one for 2020 that's compact and orange. Uh, so I thought I would pick it up and offer it. It's super vibrant, uh, loves heat, loves sun, um, easy to grow. Uh, and it, I, I just like how bright it is. And it's a little bit different for a cosmos. Uh, this is a, uh, a new color in the Happy Days series of dahlias. Happy Days is one of several series that offer you this dark, dark, almost black foliage. W when you buy them at the garden center, they might not be this dark. They might be like a dark chocolate color, but not a dark, nearly black color like what you see here. But you put them outside in full sun, the foliage gets almost black. Plus you have flowers in golds, reds, oranges, pinks above, blooms or no blooms, the foliage itself is, is gorgeous. Um, we are, our crop of dahlias was sort of spectacular this year. Um, so consequently, we're down to a few of this one, which is beautiful. It's called Sincerity. The flowers are big, they're bicolored, the foliage is perfect. Um, I can't tell you how many of these I have left because I know I was at the register for a few hours today. And um, these were going out pretty quick. Um, and I know the benches at the Shelby store where we grow, these are getting empty pretty fast. But uh, this particular dahlia uh, is exceptionally beautiful because of its flower, flowers and their foliage. There are other dahlias with beautiful foliage and beautiful flowers. We just really like this one as a new introduction for 2020 called Sincerity. Big flowers and big plant, gorgeous. Floral lace series of Dianthus has been around for years. 
And I remember when it was first introduced about 10 years ago, uh, Pan American Seed, the people who developed this, promoted the fact that this plant can flower all summer long. Regular Dianthus doesn't do that very well. The cooler it is, the more you deadhead it, the better it does. This one, floral lace, blooms strong through the summer. <clears throat> but it's not a plant that we could promote year after year after year because there were no new varieties. Um, nobody talks about it or thinks about it. Well, this is the first time they've introduced a new variety in several years. It's just called red. I think before we had scarlet. So it's a good color in a great series. Um, if you've grown Dianth, and, and you probably know, these will often overwinter, even though we sell them, is an annual in a six pack for $4.99. Um, so if you like Dianthus and you're disappointed with how they bloom later in the season, you got to try floral lace. Um, um, and, then, and then a lot of you probably know that now we have in patients that don't get the downy mildew disease. Um, uh, this is a picture at the California trials last uh, spring in April where they showed us the Beacon series up against the Amara series up against regular impatience. There's white on the left, there's red on the, on the right, and you can see the, the beacons are on the far left, the Amaras are in the middle, and then the untreated ones or the un, uh, disease resistant ones are on the right. You can see the difference, right? Beacon is the best, Amara is pretty darn good, and um, regular ones will die, period. So um, we, we are carrying every color in the Beacon series that's available. We're, and then whatever colors we can't get in the Beacons, we're picking up in the Amaras. And then we're still offering the disease prone ones, but we treat them with a fungicide that keeps them from getting the disease for months in your garden, if you have the disease. Most of us don't, but if you have the disease, a treated inpatient could be taken out by the disease as early as August or as late as uh, September or October. But the disease resistant ones, Beacons and Amaras are wonderful. That's the good news. The bad news is all my inpatients are gone except for a very late planting of mixed that won't be saleable for another week or so. Um, but if you shop around and you can pick up a beacon somewhere or an Amara, uh, I think they're wonderful plants just like uh, impatience used to be back in the day. And here you can see um, some of the different colors that the Amaras come in. But whatever color I can get in beacon, I pick that one first, Amara second. And then uh, I pick up, like you can't get a light blue in a beacon or an Amara yet, maybe next year. Um, so I carry Super Elfin, what's it called? Uh, uh, blue pearl and we just treat it with a fungicide and that's how you get the blue one to go with some of these other colors. All right, I think I'm going a little bit slow so I'll try to pick it up a little bit. <clears throat> uh, these are, you, you, I'm sure you're all forget, familiar with sun patients. They're phenomenal plants in the sun, wonderful plants in the shade, covered over with flowers, super easy to grow if you have decent soil and a, and a sprinkler system. Um, this is just a new color. Um, if you look at all the other colors, you've got um, there's a new vigorous orange. It has a beautiful gold uh, stripe in the middle of the leaf. And, oh, and, and there's many, many other colors in sun patients. Super popular plants for us in five inch pots or in flats. If you want high color impact in sun or quite a bit of shade, you can't beat these things, period. As long as you water them. <clears throat> this is sort of a fun little New Guinea patient called Roller Coaster. It's the first in the series of ro the roller coaster series and you could see it has sort of a semi doubled semi doubled flower with ruffles roller coaster that's kind of fun in real life <clears throat> this plant i don't want well i my, i'm sold out now but it's not the kind of plant you want to buy in june this is the kind of plant you want to buy in in april and enjoy it through may and then sometime in june it's probably going to start petering out because namesia have poor heat tolerance but this um the blue and gold one in the front, wait, let me see something here. Yeah, there it is. The blue and gold one in the front, I, I just fell in love with the colors, not because I went to U of M, but because um, there's a lot of really nice, uh, there's a little orange in there, there's some violet in there, there's some pale yellow in there. Um, consequently, these were very popular this spring. You just need to understand that like a pansy, these have poor heat tolerance and you shouldn't expect them to look that good for you when things start warming up, say in June, especially and definitely not in July. Just a, a fun petunia, just to give you an idea of some of the crazy things that they're doing out there. Black center, creamy yellow edge. It's called Saturn. You know, get it like the ring around Saturn. 
Um, there's a close up of the flower. It's kind of fun. A, a new starry sky. You're all familiar with the blue one, and maybe a year or two ago you saw the pink one. This is a new one called Starry Sky Burgundy. Kind of fun in that series. Um, another new interesting bicolor one called Tie Dye Violet. Interesting combination of colors. This is a double called Midnight Gold. I think this is in the Michigan Gardener magazine, featured as one of the new plants for 2020. We got samples of this in 2019, and it was very, very, very well received. So consequently, we planted quite a bit for 2020. And the good news is I planted these very late and we still have some left. I, and they're just starting to bloom. When they start cracking open and people realize what that flower looks like, they're gonna fly out the door. So you can check these out. These are, these are strong growers and a really interesting flower. Another new petunia in the Super Cal series. Super Cal's are a cross between a petunia and a calabricoa. So the flower is bigger than a calabricoa, but smaller than a petunia. And they flower super strong on plants with really good vigor. Uh, they're, they're phenomenal for us in hanging baskets. They're wonderful in um, container or bedding applications. And, and there's a close up of the flower of one of the new ones. And this is another one uh, that was new last year called Bordeaux, phenomenal color. You gotta see that one in real life. This was new in, uh, Oh, uh, this one's new for 2020, but they sent me samples in 2019. It's called Cinnamon. It really looks like that. It's spectacular. And then here you can see some of the, some of the other colors available in the Super Cal series. They're not just pretty. They're super high performance plants. These are still selling really well for us in hanging baskets, and um, they look great. Um, this is just a Salvia farinacea, like Victoria Blue. Um, it, maybe it blooms a little bit heavier. Maybe the flower is a little bit bluer, but I don't think this is all that exciting. But the fact that it's a proven winter plant um, and it's due for 2020, I figured I better show you so you didn't think I was missing the boat. Um, we are growing it. If you want it, you can come and get it. But um, I don't think it's, I mean, you know, it's proven winter, so you're going to pay an extra buck. It's a $4.99, um, whereas you can get a six pack of Victoria Blue for $2.49. Um, so it's up to you. If you want a sort of a more of a specimen type blue salvia in a pot, try it. Let me know how it does. Uh, this is salvia purple and bloom. Now you all know of black and blue, black calyx, blue flower. And a couple years ago, they made a, a slight improvement to it, like a heavier flower, bigger, a little uh, um, bigger, heavier flower, bigger flower, more intense color called black and, black and bloom. And now new for 2020 is purple in bloom. So instead of a black and blue flower, it's a black and purple flower. That's what you see right there. These are nice, but a good two, two plus feet tall. Loved by hummingbirds, of course. Um, and this is a, uh, I got samples of this last year and I loved it. It's, wait, let me see if there's a, cl nope, no close up of the flower, but the calyx is sort of mauvey and the flower is a cherry red. And it's a, it's a big flower and it's a robust grower. Uh, a few people that got samples of this last year loved it. Like Judy Cornelia got some of this and she was raving about it. Um, so I tripled production for 2019 and they're selling beautifully. Uh, this is just a new color in the Twister series of Verbena. Twisters are the most popular series of Verbena on the planet right now. They come in all different colors. Um, I don't think this is uh, one of the most stellar colors, but it's the new one. So I figured I better show you. You can get these, these lanai's in pink and blue and red and dark purple and light blue and lime green and white and all sorts of different striped flowers. But this is the new one for 2020. Um, Verbena bonariensis uh, has, has been really popular the last few years. And those of you who've grown it probably know that it'll reseed and come up here and there. And, and it blows in the wind and it's four feet tall and it has really good heat tolerance and stuff like that. They, they've come out with a, a really good one that I like uh, a couple years ago called Meteor Showers. If you want a really stiff, strong one with a big flower that you can grow in sun or partial sun in a pot or in the ground, grab Meteor Showers. This is more like, this isn't as heavy as Meteor Showers. It looks just like Verbena bonariensis, but shrunk down by a third. Uh, so that's pretty cool. But I think Meteor Showers blows this away. And just for the record, for those of you who haven't been able to get Bonariensis from us, 
um, we, the crop is finally ready because our supplier of uh, the, the, the plugs uh, shorted me on three different plantings. I was able to get some plugs in from Colorado a few weeks ago. We planted them and now we have some verbena venariensis to sell. Don't tell too many people because the supply is limited. <clears throat> um, in the uh, profusion in the Zahara series of zinnias, those are the disease resistant ones that tend to grow a little bit shorter at like 12 to 14 inches with the sm smaller flowers, but they don't get the disease. This is a new one called cherry bicolor. <clears throat> with this, you have every color in the rainbow available to, uh, to you in zinnias. And now I think there's one or two other bicolors out there. There's like a, a, a yellow with an orangey center. Now we have white with a cherry center. There's one or two others out there. So this is just another um, sort of fun bicolor to add to all those disease resistant zinnias that we have available to us. And I still have plenty of, plenty of those left too. Zinnias are, zinnias like Gonfrina and Lantana, my, my cord just fell out, but I, I have plenty of power. Everything's okay. Um, zinnias like um, verbena and lantana and uh, gomfrina are great plants through the heat of the summer. So we try to offer more of those in like June and July, along with petunias and stuff like that. Okay, now a few perennial, perennials. Uh, Carex is a little ornamental grass that you could grow in the shade. And up until now, we've had some really nice silvery ones and white ones and green ones. And this one, is all gold. It's called Everillo. Um, and Jackie, you might have seen this one. This was at uh, Shanna Claire. I don't know if you went, went to Shanna Claire when, uh, when you were at Longwood, but this is not too far away and it's one of the first gardens you see when you get there. Um, and I was happy to see I, how they used it here. It's a I really nice- a I have at least a dozen of these because they performed so well for me the year before that um, I ended up actually going out to specialty where she had a bunch. I ended, I have at least a dozen of them in my beds. They stay, they stay uh, green or rather yellow gold all winter. I just cut them all back about a month ago, and they started to flower and they're growing. And look they, at look at how they look at how they glow. It's just a glowing mass. Exactly. I, I love the way they use it here, contrasted with bold foliage that's green rather than linear foliage that's gold. You know, you, you got to contrast this color with uh, different colors and different textures to get a really nice effect like what you see here. I like this just in the edge of a pot cascading over the side. Um, I have these in cute little pots for like seven bucks so that people can nestle it into a container as a, um, you know, a complimentary foil. Uh, oh, that's the only picture I have of those. But um, check those out. It's an alternative to Hakanakloa, which is one of my favorite or, well, it's my favorite ornamental grass for shade and one of my favorite ornamental grasses, period. Um, and there is an all gold one that's so similar in color, but a slightly different, more of a waterfall texture rather than a, a radially symmetrical texture. Um, this is a, a, a there's a, so many new coreopsis out there. It's really hard to get excited about them. But what I did like about this one is the flower was extra huge um, and it blooms all summer long, which isn't all that unusual for a coreopsis, but I like the colors. I like the flower size. I like that it blooms all summer. Um, and like other uh, not thread leaf type coreopsis, you get a few years out of this. They don't last forever, but it's vibrant and it blooms all summer, relatively inexpensive. So you can check, see how big the flower is. Good color, big flower, blooms all summer. Dicentra pink, pink diamonds. Um, this is a proven winter plant and it's, it's pretty cool. I don't think it's all that strong, but I do like the color of the flower. It's sort of like a uh, like a mauvey pink up against silver foliage. So, uh, and it's going to be a little on the expensive side because growers are, are sort of having a hard time finishing this nicely in a container. But if you see it and you like it, buy it. These bloom all summer long, which is nice. We already have fern leaf fleeting hearts like King of Hearts and several others that bloom all summer long. But this is the new one, slightly different color. Proven winners. There you see it in a bed, looking pretty good. <clears throat> a few new Coreopsis, um, just to kind of make things more complicated when you're picking out cone flower and you don't know which of the 15 varieties of orange to pick. This one's called Orange You Awesome. I'm pretty sure this was developed by Walters. Their breeding programs are usually pretty strong. So uh, I think it's got a big flower. Uh, it's a little bit on the compact side, early to bloom. Check it out if you love it, buy it. Uh, there could be two or three other varieties that look a lot like this, so um, choose wisely. Same with this one here, Yellow My Darling, also from Walters. 
extra big flowers, extra early blooming, slightly more compact growth habit. Sombrero Sangrita is a new uh, sombrero uh, variety for 2020. I saw some of these, I didn't just see them. I, I saw them in a, a nursery potted them last fall for to sell in 2020. <clears throat> and um, they started blooming. So I bought, I had to be a hundred of them uh, over a two or three week period. And on the bench, they were super vibrant. People loved them and they flew out the door. Uh, when you see it, you'll know what I mean. It's a very, very electric, fiery, orangey red flower, lots of blooms, um, big cones. Check this one out. I think it's one of the best in the Sombrero series. Uh, in uh, Hellebores, we have a lot of blooming size plants. There's still maybe a, a couple hundred of those left, but we also potted up a, a thousand or so cute little ones in four and a half inch pots. Now they're nicely rooted. They're $9.99, which you will never ever find anything in the um, honeymoon or the wedding series at that price anywhere. Uh, in part because I didn't know how, how much the seedlings cost me when I planted them. So I just picked $9.99 as the price. Um, if you buy them this summer, you'll have beautiful flowers like what I'm about to show you next year, because they're not blooming size. These new ones aren't blooming size plants yet. Um, and if you wait too long, I'm gonna put them in bigger pots and sell them to you for $19.99 next year. So you gotta be smart. Uh, this is Mother of the Bride. This is Black Tie Affair, California Dreamin', uh, Snowbells, and there's, let's see, did I put it? Yep, yeah, here's Wedding Crasher. Oh, and then we go, go into Daylilies. So between the Wedding Series and the Honeymoon Series, We've got all these different doubles from which to choose and all these different singles from which to choose. Um, you got to come and see these. You got to look at the little pictures on the tag, but the color range and the flower form is spectacular. And what a wonderful year for hellebores this year. Any of you who have the, uh, the, the I don't know, the, the, the luck of having these in your garden really had a wonderful show this spring. It seemed like the blooms lasted forever and there were e enormous flowers and there were lots of them. Um, I am not a big fan of daylilies because of their foliage. However, I did get a little carried away with the water, Walters catalog last uh, fall and ordered um, a dozen or so that have really interesting co color patterns like this one. Uh, this is called Hungry Eyes, and I picked up a few others that are, are really striking and special like this. Some of these are rebloomers. Um, you can interpret that however you want. Uh, but I picked them up mostly because the flowers are pretty interesting for a daylily. They're still going to have pathetic foliage come fall, but by then you can trim it down and pretend it was never there. Uh, that's called Ink Heart. That's called Raspberry Eclipse. That's called Sound of My Heart. So you see which ones I like. I like the ones with the Picatee Edge. Um, and those are just the new ones. There's several others that are a year or two old. Um, that it were growing and when these are blooming in just a few weeks, they should be pretty spectacular. Uh, there are more corabels available out there. Um, and like coneflower, it's, it's, it's just such a mess how many you have to choose from now. Um, this is one of the proven winter plants, so I figured I better show it to you. I probably have four others that look just like this. This one's called wild berry, very purple, glossy leaf, uh, big, beautiful, semi-evergreen, protected from midday sun. Um, and you'll have a beautiful amount of purpley foliage that you can put up against that Carex that we talked about earlier, or a blue hosta, or a green fern, and you create these gorgeous uh, foliage combinations in shade or partial shade. Uh, they're, they're, oh, this is uh, one called Timeless Night that not only has really pretty dark, nearly black foliage, but it's a heavy bloomer, as you can see from, from this picture right here. A new Heucarilla. Um, similar to some of the varieties that are already out there, but it's the new one called I Spy. Uh, come and check it out, see if it's any different than, from, um, what are some of the others out? Uh, I can't remember, the uh, Gold Zebra, and there's a few others that look an awful lot like this. If I didn't have the name with this plant, I would, I mean, this looks a lot like Gold Zebra and a few others to me. Um, so you can put them side by side and see which one you like the most. There it is in bloom. Pink Fizz is unique in that um, the leaves have a really strong teal tone to them. Um, and I've never seen that ever before in a heucarilla. So I really like this one. Pink flower, but it's above this really cool sort of teal colored 
leaf with a dark uh, mahogany center. Uh, indigo frost, not really sure. Well, it looks like all the others, but you can see what you think of that. Firecracker, uh, this is a heuchera, not a heucherilla, sort of a unique color combination for a corabels rather than a heucherilla. But I think the, the lines between heucherilla and heuchera are starting to blur a little bit. <clears throat> From Walter's breeding, hibiscus breeding program, we have quite a few new hibiscus. Um, like other um, products of their breeding program, you have extra big flowers with overlapping petals. They have flowers from the top of the plant to the bottom of the plant. The flowers will last for more than a day, unlike the hibiscus of yesterday. Perfectly hardy, strong blooming in July and August. Um, and what they're playing with besides some pretty cool looking flowers is some really nice foliage. Candy Crush for a green leafed one is supposed to be sort of like the benchmark for heavy blooming hibiscus. It's a, um, uh, it's comparable to the other crush, cranberry crush, or well, I can't remember what it's called. Heavy blooming, you can see the color of the flower, flowers top to bottom, et cetera, et cetera. There's a close up of the flower. This is called Dark Mystery, nearly black foliage with these glowing light pink flowers with a darker red center. Look, look at how dark the foliage is. Pretty cool um, leaf even before it starts blooming. Evening Rose also has that really dark foliage with a rose colored flower. There it is uh, with it. Oh, and it's kind of nice too when the flowers fall off, the calyx is sort of like a bright green. You can see that there. And then this is, this is pretty cool um, because they, uh, rather than just a green leaf or a, uh, like a chocolate brown or black leaf, this leaf has a cream edge. And the very edge of that cream has a little hint of rose. So it's almost like a tri-colored leaf with this pretty pink flower. Let's see if there's a shot. No, there isn't. There isn't a shot of the whole plant, but that's the leaf with that flower. Perfectly hardy hibiscus. Great in sun or partial sun. You can put it into quite a bit of shade. Um, there are some new primula in the Bellarina series. However, uh, they're pretty much impossible to get. I'm on a wait list to get these plants. Uh, right now, I only have two colors in the Bell Bellarina series, uh, the yellow one and Valentine. And I have quite a few other primula available too that, that are sort of fun, not just the boring ones. But Carmen is a new one in the Bellarina series. I probably won't get the plants till this summer. So they won't be blooming until next spring. So next spring, you could look forward to having something like this. And this is some of the other colors that are already available in the Bellarina series. Right now in stock, I have the yellow one in the center and I have the dark red one on the right. Um, I took this out of your handout because I did not get the plants. But this is that little hardy crepe myrtle that Walters has in their breeding program. It only grows uh, two to three feet tall, blooms late summer when there aren't that many bushes blooming. Um, it's hardy to zone 6A, which you might know we're 6A, 5B. So you'd have to plant this in a protected site. Um, sort of a fun plant, but difficult to overwinter. Uh, Walters is overwintering them very successfully on the other side of the state. This is the new one for 2020. I don't know why they didn't send me the plants, but I didn't get them. Um, so I don't have this. So I took it out of your handout. Um, and this is just a, uh, a perennial salvia. We already have some with this type of flower that are blue, but now with Moulin Rouge, we have this extra big two-lipped sort of hooked flowering uh, salvia in pink. Um, like other salvia, it blooms pretty strong late May, early June. You cut it back, it reflushes, cut it back again, and it will rebloom strong a third time. George, how much shade will that take, that salvia? Pardon me? How much shade will that salvia take? I figured you would ask me that. Um, I think you got to give it a good four hours of, uh, of bright light. Um, and if you could just get it maybe two hours of midday sun, that would be wonderful. I, I think it'll be okay. It might just grow taller and not, and not really uh, flower as much. I think that, that's a good way to put it. I think it'll live. It just won't thrive like it would in full sun. Some of you may recall there was a new uh, uh, Camp Shatticum type sedum uh, developed last year called Atlantis. And uh, Walters has introduced their version called Boogie Woogie. I can't really tell the difference between the two. So you can put them side by side and see if you can tell a difference. But uh, it just, it's just a low amount of bright cream and green variegated foliage 
yellow flowers, late summer, super hardy, loves the sun, drought tolerant, um, vibrant in and out of bloom, just like Atlantis. And this is called Yellow Brick Road. It's just a mound of green foliage with yellow flowers late summer. Not a big fan, but I think it's a proven winter plant, so I figured I better show it to you. Uh, this, this I think is really cool. This is a Spigelia, the common name for which is uh, Indian paintbrush, native plant uh, out of the Walters breeding program. I saw the bed where they were uh, trialing a lot of different versions of this. So new for 2020 is they're the first one to come out of their breeding program, which is called Little Redhead. Bright red and yellow bicolored flowers. Ours are just starting to bloom. Uh, we've already sold dozens of these. If they're, if they're in the ground here and there, um, they're, they're probably moving along even more quickly than mine are in the pots, and they might be blooming some. Super vibrant, big mound, like two to three feet wide by two to three feet tall. Oh, there, oh, that's the picture. Oh, well, that's, that's what it looks like in the Walters uh, uh, display garden. Spigelia redhead. Grows in sun or partial sun. Native plant. And that is it. See? Hey, George? Yes. Do you, do you have the spigella, spigelia right now? Yes. Well, we closed at five. You'd have to go tomorrow morning at nine. Put it one aside. I just killed mine. I don't know. I had it for five years, and it just up and died on me this year. You know, I, I've heard that before. Uh, really surprised. Well, I don't plants I lost this year. Yeah. Um, well, and it wasn't this one. You you had the regular one, the right the the yeah. regular spigelia. The, the, and you know our the play, the tissue culture lab where I was getting regular spigelia from stopped carrying it. Uh, so yeah. I was really happy to see that Walters introduced this like just in time. Otherwise, I wouldn't I wouldn't have any version of this plant. Um, I don't know if this is any hardier than what you already have, but I do do know that the the color is very vibrant. The flower is a lot bigger, um, and so far I really like the way they they look in a pot. Which do you, um, get, do, you, do you get a rebloom on these if you deadhead them? Uh, I would think that they would rebloom some. Yeah, I I would probably have to check the literature to know for sure. I potted up a hundred of these last fall. Those are the ones that are blooming, um, starting to bloom now, and I potted up another hundred this spring. Um, and those probably won't be blooming for another, you know, an extra week or two. Okay. So you can come in and check these out. So is it okay to answer questions now? Yeah, um, everybody should be able to unmute themselves if they have a question. Feel free to uh, click the unmute button in your lower left-hand corner or feel free to use the chat function and uh, we can answer any questions that anybody has. I, I will tell you that this is a, um, this talk was prepared a few months ago when I wasn't really sure what would be coming in and how this would turn out and how that would turn out. Um, there's probably uh, 200 new plants for 2020, and you just looked at whatever it was, 60 or 70 of them. <clears throat> but when they introduce a new phlox, and it looks just like an old phlox, I'm not going to waste my time showing it to you, unless it's a proven winter plant, and then I do it just so that you don't think I'm behind the times. So proven winter comes out with a lot of stuff that's a lot like what's already out there. In fact, it might even be the same thing that is, that's already out there, but just under a different name. Um, so I, I feel like I have to stay on, a little extra on top of that. So anybody else have any other questions? Anybody want to say anything about um, what you've seen at the garden centers this spring so far? Is it mayhem? Let's see if I can get some people unmuted. <laughs> If anybody has trouble finding that mute button, they should be able to find it at the, the bottom left. I, I walked into the vegetable area uh, about an hour and a half ago, right after the store closed. Um, all of my tomatoes were on, the, all the tomatoes that were rem remaining were on the bench. All of the peppers were on the bench. And it looks like I mean, there's hardly anything left there. It's unbelievable what's been going on in vegetables this year and in bedding plants. And now perennials are really, really close behind. Um, I've been a little short staffed in perennials, so um, things are a little ugly out there right now, but um, I'm making some changes. So hopefully we'll get back uh, up to speed as far as perennials go. So if, if there's no questions out there, are we good? I am, and 
Got a couple of people that they said that they uh, saw the varieties were short in the greenhouse, but I know questions yet. Oh, chat function. Uh, I think you'll find that like super common stuff like sweet potato vine, begonias in patients, they're gone. People are calling me up begging for geraniums. Thank God I have them, but they must be calling other places and they don't have them. I don't know why, why else that would be happening. And boy, if you've got a jalapeno pepper, you could probably sell it for 50 bucks. <clears throat> Are we live? Yep. I can hear are, someone. You are live. Go for what, what, are the, what are the precautions at the greenhouse there at um, Kelly's? Well, we're all wearing masks and gloves. And, um, and we've got you know, the plastic up between the cashiers and the customers. And we've got the X's on the floor. Uh, you'll find that the, the checkout's a little bit different. We have one line so that everybody can be spread out a little bit further. We, we prefer all of our customers to wear masks and gloves. We have limited our hours. Our parking lot sort of keeps us too busy. Sure um, we're only open nine to seven. Now that voting yeah. season is in so, full swing. Period. That helps too. We have a lot of space so we can really spread people out. Very fortunate okay. in that respect. Sure. George, I have one comment. I've, I've been out to a bunch of nurseries. Uh -huh. um, one of the things I've seen a lot of is a lot more proven winners than I think usually. Yeah. Yet, uh, because some of the some of the providers, the producers weren't producing. Because of the I I think um I think why you might be seeing more proven winners out there is because uh, well, and I'm a good example. When If I start running low on petunias or calibrachoa or salvia or something like that, I got to go out there and try to find them somewhere else. Now, I have a lot of salvia, I have a lot of petunias, and I have a lot of calibrachoa, so I don't need to go anywhere else right now. But if I wanted something like that, Four Star, right, right in Carleton, Michigan, that grows a lot of those proven winners, is where I would go. So other places that where you shop, maybe they didn't grow enough of those things. So they're picking up the phone and ordering whatever they can from Four Star. But what they're finding now is that Four Star is sold out of everything. So they can't even get plants from there. I mean, I, I, we've been out of we've been really, really low on begonias for four days. We've been out of a couple different colors for two or three days. Um, and if you call around and try to find them, they are very, very hard to find. Landscapers are killing for those plants right now. So. But why are there shortages? What's that? Why are there shortages? Is it uh, because um, burn, baby, I think uh, this, burn, so many people were staying at home, they've decided to try gardening. So they're <laughs> ripping out old shrubs, they're putting in new perennials, they're adding beds, they're trying vegetable gardening. That's uh, very true. Thinking about what it would be like if they couldn't go to the grocery store. So they're growing more tomatoes and lettuce and peppers. Um, uh, if you talk to anybody that's in my business, they are having the, the, um, the best sale of their dream. Because the, the demand has just gone through the roof. Um, maybe, just maybe, some of the growers cut back on transplanting or sowing um, or growing because they were a little gun shy back in uh, March or April. Uh, and that might be contributing to the problem as well. Now, I, I, didn't, um, I didn't do any of that. I grew every, I sowed every seed and took every cutting and planted every plug that I had. So I was, um, Pretty fortunate to have my own supply of uh, plants to keep. Usually, what I see around here are beautiful yes, beautiful Anything else out there? George, I do think that the reason everyone's selling so many plants is because what else are you going to spend your money on these days? You yeah. Restaurants, right? You can't go to a restaurant. You can't go see a movie. 
Yeah. You should be selling flour and yeast too, because yeah. let me tell you, yeah, that's hard to get a hold of. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm gardening. My husband's baking. Well, what did, else? You, did you do some new lettuce? Oh. New what? Oh, it's enough for both of us. Oh, lettuce? <laughs> Yeah, no, I think there's just a lot, a lot of people gardening. Uh, we, oh, we, we're getting so many more phone calls, question after question. This is, this has been the most challenging year by far because of curbside service, all of the questions from all the new gardeners, people wanting to place orders for pickup, people wanting delivery so they don't have to leave their homes. Um, it's, it's been, it's been tough. And then on top of that, um, you know, we don't. I don't have my full staff. I'm missing two or three key people and four or five, you know, regular salespeople. It, it's tough. If you, if you want to see the, the Tully's um, perennial sales staff right now, um, he's on your computer screen. That's it. <laughs> I'm the only one in perennials right now while I answer the phones and why I, while I help out in, on uh, cash register. Um, Tina is at home with a, she's she got tested twice to see if she's okay, she's been negative, but she's sick right now. And another one of my perennial people is staying home with her elderly mother and so on and so on. So uh, it, it's a little tough. All righty, eight o'clock, I know what that means. Thank you, George. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you, George. Okay, if anybody has any questions, you can call the store or you can email me or, or whatever. All righty? All right. Okay. I'm, I'm George at tellies.com. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Bye. You guys have a good night. Talk to you later. Thank you for your presentation, George. She has this every year. Amanda, thank you, Amanda. You were marvelous to set this all up for us. No problem. Good job, Amanda. Thanks. Thank you. You guys have a nice night. You too. Thank you, Amanda. I miss all of you guys. <laughs> what is the handout he referred to? Uh oh. Um, you should have gotten a handout uh, forwarded by Sally this afternoon, this morning ish. Morning. Um, I can have her resend that out. It's on the bottom of the invitation. Okay. How's the baby, Amanda? Crazy, walking around, getting in trouble, finding ways to get skin knees and bumps and bruises now. So, you know, that's fun. Are you working? Are you out working, Amanda? No, I'm just staying home right now. With them, so. Keep an eye on that guy. Oh gosh, I got, hey, look at Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was over at uh, picnics uh, this week. I saw Nancy Schmidt was out there. You must have gone. Sorry? Who's that? There's a guy that always tells us.